What's up you guys, Sasha here, and today I am going to review the Monzo current account and its card. I am going to go through the design and features of the card, and at the end I will tot it all up and give you the Money Fox score uh, to see how good it really is. Let's jump right in. Monzo first launched its card in 2015, but back then the card wasn't a current account, it lacked most basic features such as direct debits and basic payment options, and it wasn't even called Monzo. First known as Mondo, the company had to change its name after it tried to register the trademark. A quick vote by its users followed and the Monzo name arrived in August 2016. Monzo offered fairly basic but very brightly coloured prepaid cards until April 2018 when they launched their current account, almost exactly a year after they were granted their banking licence. Today the company is fast becoming one of the most popular challenger banks in the UK, valued at £2 billion in the last funding round in 2019, Monzo boasts over 3 million customers. As they continue to grow and expand their offering, let's take a look at their current account in detail. So I completed the application process for the card, I managed to get through, it was relatively simple, there were a couple of things that I wanted to note. Um, you have to do two things as part of the application process other than answering basic questions about yourself and uh, your address and all that kind of stuff. You have to provide some evidence of your address and you have to provide evidence of your identity. For the address piece, you just need uh, to get a document, a driving license, some other document uh, to prove uh, where you live. For the identity part, you need to record a video so that they can match you um, to your document um, to prove uh, that you are applying on your own behalf. Um, it did take more than one go with getting the photos uh, working and, and, and getting them into the right frame within the app. Um, wasn't the most straightforward thing ever, but it worked in the end. The, the, the other bit is once you do submit everything, you then have to enter a waiting queue for your application to be reviewed. And I didn't really appreciate that when I first applied. Mine took over a day um, for somebody to reply to one of my messages uh, in, the, in the application journey. And uh, because of that, uh, the card took longer than I expected to arrive. However, from when my account was approved, my car took just one day to land on my doorstep, which is considerably better than almost any other credit card current account I have previously applied for, so thumbs up for that. Um, here's the card, it is very bright, it is a coral, orange, pinky colour, depending on uh, what you like to call it. Um, it's, it's, it certainly stands out, it stands out in anybody's wallet, and I think that's probably why a lot of people liked it at the beginning. Now let's go and try to use this card and see how it works in practice. Using the card is relatively straightforward. Uh, you set up the account to start with, and there are a couple of things I want to mention on that. One is you're allowed to use not your full legal name on the front of the card, but a different name of your choosing. Activation is also great. You do not need to ring any number. You don't have to be typing in things into your phone. You just go on your, on your app, and you do still have to type in the entire long card number to activate it, which I'm not sure is necessarily uh, required, but but that, that's the process that you have to do, and the moment you do it, your card is good to go. Um, just in the same place as where you activate the card, you're able to freeze and unfreeze the card. Uh, Monzo was one of the first, if not the first bank to allow you to, within the app, immediately freeze and unfreeze your cards. Um, most banks still don't let you do that today. Um, several years after Monzo did it the first time around. It's a really neat feature, it's extremely useful. There's, there's a good reason why everybody else is trying to do the same. Um, a few interesting uh, bits about the look and feel. It feels very modern. Everything has a photo, I quite like that. Your account has a photo, you can pick anything you like. Um, I'm going for my coffee. Um, you can pick your face if you, if you so wish. You can attach specific photos to individual pots, whether they're saving pots or other pots. We're, we're going to talk about pots separately later. Now, almost every bit that you can set up, you can go and attach a photo to it uh, to personalize it. Um, another good thing that, <coughs> again, most banks today still don't do is you're allowed to see all the transactions as they um, are made rather than when they fully clear. And the difference here is Monzo is using the authorization data 
to show you transactions um, rather than the fully clear transaction data. And the difference is the moment you go and spend in the shop, um, first an authorization is run where the bank is asked, hey, uh, can we take this amount of money from this card number? And when they give the go ahead, that money um, goes through, but it takes a day or two for the actual full clearance to happen. However, once the authorization is done, the transaction is as good as done. So they show you that data and you'll see at the bottom of the transaction screen a little mention of that. The same is the true for deposits, which is also quite neat. And that um, covers uh, faster payments uh, predominantly, but generally when mo money comes in or comes out, uh, the impact you, you will see straight away. Um, a little bit about the transactions themselves. When you go into one of the transactions, um, you can see um, the category, you can assign whatever you like. Um, with all of these settings, once you've set, set them up once for a recurring transaction, there's a setting you can choose uh, for it to remember it and use the same next time if you like accounting for things uh, in your budget that way. You're allowed to then upload a receipt if you want to keep track of that, uh, name the transaction, whatever you want, um, and you can split the bill or add it to a shared tab. Again, we're going to come to that a little bit later too. Payments that repeat, uh, such as monthly subscriptions to things or any other regular payments that you make, uh, once you set them up once, you'll be able to get exactly the same settings every single time they come through, which is nice. Um, important uh, note that I picked up that I haven't really seen mentioned elsewhere is when somebody has sent money to you, um, when you click on that transaction, you're able to actually go and send that money right back to the account that it came from or any other amount of money because it automatically shows you like which account it's come from. And that's a super neat thing, which I haven't actually seen before. I actually, with lots of banks that I have had current accounts with, they don't even tell you the actual account number it's arrived from, let alone the name. And so quite often you'll then have to ask the person to give them their money back. Here you can do it just with one click. Another interesting trick is when the salary comes in, you can automatically set it up to be subdivided into pots. So if you have rent to pay, certain bills to pay that you have to pay every month, you can automatically assign some of that money to go in. Again, we're going to come onto pots in just a second. Overall, super easy to use for moving money in and out of the account. So let's talk about the pots. Um, there are two types of pots that both confusingly have very similar names. One is your savings pots and one is just your regular account pots. The two are not the same and they work slightly differently. Here's the difference with your account pots. This is the way that you split the money that you hold in your current account into slightly different categories so that you can then use the different parts of your money for different needs. So if you want to assign a certain amount of money for going out every month, a certain other amount of money for paying rent and something else for paying uh, for your regular monthly utilities bill, um, you can go, go ahead and split it up automatically and every time salary comes in, it will automatically distribute money into those pots as per the rules that you set. Now the savings pots are slightly different. There are two groups of savings that they offer. They're very, very closely integrated into the current account, but they're not part of the current account. They are a different form of account that you can bolt on. Uh, they make it very seamless and it's kind of hard to understand that it's actually nothing to do with your current account. It's even provided by third party companies like Investec. Um, <clears throat> what they do is they offer you two types of savings. One is the easy access, immediately available, you can get your money back whenever you want. Um, that has a minimum of 10 pounds. So you have to carry 10 pounds as a minimum and you can put in a minimum of 10 pounds at any one time. That gives you at the moment um, up to 0.93% and you, that comes as either just a regular, regular savings account or a flexible ISA. Um, the other type of account is fixed term and you have to deposit at least 500 pounds and you have to leave it there for at least 12 months. Now the rate is considerably higher. It is 1.32%. It is still not as good as uh, some of the best savings products you can have elsewhere. And the fact that you have to part your cash away for such a long time without any way of having it back um, and having to put at least 500 pounds in isn't really great. So I would, I would consider other options um, if I was looking to save money. With the short uh, flexible savings accounts, one thing to note is when they say immediate, it's not quite immediate. Um, if you look in the terms and conditions, it will tell you that you will get your money by the end of the next working day, as long as you submit your request by 5 p.m. on the previous working day. So it's gonna take you a little bit of time. Don't expect to be able to just get it whenever you want. An interesting thing with regular pots is you can actually subdivide them down 
into a second tier of pots. I'm not sure, is it a sub pot? Whatever it is. Um, so what this allows you to do is to take a grouped pot of say utility bills and split it into your electricity bill, your water bill, your internet bill, whatever you like, and divide those monies up a bit further. It's a bit finicky, it's a bit detailed, but if you like being in control and really managing your finances down to the T, you set it up once and you leave it, it should just work. Let's talk a little bit about borrowing. Now, a current account is not necessarily a borrowing tool and they, uh, Monzo is primarily a current account, but they do offer you two ways in which you can borrow money from them. The first is the more obvious is the overdraft. And the overdraft only opens up to you once you begin paying your salary in and showing your behavior so then they can make some kind of assessment as to whether um, they want to lend to you or not. Um, if they don't have enough data, you'll just get this message that overdraft's not currently available. When they are, the arranged overdraft rates are either 19.9%, 29.9% or 39.9%, which is reasonably expensive compared to other forms of borrowing, but not as bad as what a bunch of high street banks have recently been doing, such as HSBC, uh, placing everybody on a 39.9% rate. So um, if you need it um, and you're eligible, it's there. There's a second layer of overdraft which is the unarranged overdraft and the way they phrased it is if you already have an existing arranged overdraft you will be able to pay an unarranged overdraft at the same rate but if you do not have an arranged overdraft you will have to pay 39.9 percent apr the important thing to note is unlike some banks which like to profiteer on this it is pretty hard to get into an unarranged overdraft with monzo um, what they do is they block all transactions or take you into your overdraft except for offline transactions. So these are things when you are not directly linked to their bank account. Let's say you're paying on a plane or you're buying petrol at a service station in the nighttime and they um, don't immediately process the exact amount of fuel you're going to take. And so that comes through as an offline transaction. Several things like that can take you into an unranged overdraft, but any regular purchase um, should be blocked and it won't go through. Now, the other way that you can borrow from Monzo are loans. The loans are, have two price points. For below £7,500, it is 19.5%. It's actually gone up just in the last day or two. Um, for above £7,500, it is just 3.7%. Just something to note, it actually will cost you less interest to borrow £15,000 over a three-year period than it will to borrow £3,000. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the other features that the account has. Um, one that's really popular is the ability to um, split bills with your friends. And there's several different ways of doing it. You can just click on the various friends that also have Monzo from your contacts and split the bill that way. There's a separate feature where you can find friends who are nearby. And let's say you're all together in a restaurant or somewhere else like that, that is a really quick way of being able to split a restaurant bill without having to do any calculations. Um, Another feature that they've recently added is the electricity and gas switching scheme. Now you'll see there's a bar at the top of your account which promotes this quite actively. Um, to be fair, it's not very good. Um, if you click through, all it'll tell you is, it'll ask you how many bedrooms you've got, it'll ask you what your current meter is, it won't ask you anything else, it won't ask you who you're currently with, your current price, your current rate any other features, it then just tries to sell you some other um, third party accounts to switch to without any consideration as to whether you're gonna save or not. Um, it's just a revenue play. Uh, it's a bit disappointing because the rest of the account within Monzo is so clean and very user centric. This just feels like a really sh short sighted way of making a little bit of money on the side. Um, next. Uh, you can use the card abroad for free. This is how Monzo first became really popular with the younger crowd who like to travel. Um, you can spend money abroad for free uh, on regular purchases. You can also withdraw cash for free, which is quite unusual. So you don't get charged either the ATM fee or the foreign exchange fee, up to 200 pounds. After 200 pounds, you'll have to pay a 3% fee, and that is not per day, that is per 30 day period. Note that this is outside Europe. Within Europe, standard UK free usage applies. Another thing to note is if you have children or if you're a 16 or 17 year old yourself, you can get one of these accounts for yourself um, minus the borrowing features. This special version of the account for 16, 17 year olds, um, it basically is exactly the same as the one that is available to the general public, 
you just can't have overdrafts and you can't borrow loans. Um, there's a few other minor tweaks, but generally speaking, you get all the features of the full account. There are three things that I feel Monzo could really improve on with their current account. I just want to quickly go through those as well. Now, number one is the ability to cash in checks. I know, I know uh, some of you might say, hey, I can't remember the last time I saw a check, but sometimes you will get one. You, there's always either some relative that will send you one or the HMRC. The HMRC actually quite likes sending a check if they've taken too much tax from you. That's the only way you can get your money back. So if one of those arrives in the post, the only way that you can cash it in with Monzo is to send it in an envelope to Monzo. The postage is free, uh, it's, you just write free post Monzo on it, but they're saying it will take up to three weeks for you to actually get the money into your current account. And um, number two, the, a similar thing but with cash, you can use um, a number of pay point locations around uh, the UK to, to deposit cash into your account, but there's a limit. You can only do up to a thousand pounds, and uh, <coughs> not 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 only can you do it only up to a thousand pounds, but you're also limited by the fact that uh, pay point will charge you uh, for those transactions. So on a large amount, that might not sound a lot, but if you have been given say 10 pounds or 20 pounds by your grandmother for your birthday and you want to put that into your account, that'll cost you one pound for the transaction, which on a 20 pound uh, deposit is 5%. Again, that sounds a bit expensive and uh, is, is, is not great. I, I really hope that there would be a better way of doing it. Downside number three is the ability to contact Monzo. Now there are two ways that you can contact them. You can either chat to them or you can try to call them. Um, now the call center is reasonably uh, good but limited and sometimes you may have to wait. Now I had to, to wait uh, when I called and um, it, was, it wasn't quick. The chat feature is also surprisingly slow. So you'd think that during working hours on a weekday, they would respond quickly, but actually when I submitted the message, it took them until the next day to actually get back to me, uh, which I found surprising for such a, a vibrant and uh, fast working bank in other ways. So let's sum things up. Monzo is a great current account. It is modern, it feels nice, it is easy to use on the app. It has a few downsides that we'll mark it down. And I think we're gonna cover one or two ones that I haven't quite mentioned when we come to the scores. Um, it offers all the key things that you need and it offers them in a really easy to use and nice way. It doesn't offer some of the things that you might need very rarely, but when you do need them, it will be frustrating. Like for example, sending money abroad, you'll have to go and use a third party provider to do that. If you have any other needs, it's, it's, it's uh, a bank account that fundamentally does the basics really well, but then doesn't do things that aren't the basics. Um, so let's get to the MoneyFox score. Uh, so we score on uh, three different parts. The first is the application process. Um, Speed-wise, for the actual filling out of the application process, I've given it an eight out of 10. Uh, the reason it wasn't it was marked down is because of those photos that uh, actually weren't quite as quick and easy as perhaps they're intended to be uh, to submit. Ease of use, I gave it a nine, uh, very easy to fill in, um, a little bit um, <coughs> lengthy compared to what I thought it would be, but uh, they are offering a current account and they are a bank and they have to ask you a bunch of questions. On the onboarding delivery, I gave it a seven, and the reason it's seven is for the factors I mentioned before, which is the response to my application and an issue that uh, came up was a bit on the slow side, um, uh, but that was compensated uh, by the fact that the card arrived really quite quickly. Um, let's go to using the product. So basic use, so spending on it, uh, using the app, all of those things, great, I have no complaints. And that gives that a score of nine. Uh, making payments, I've dropped it down to an eight from what I thought would be a 10, given the way the product works. And the reason for that is the two pieces I mentioned earlier with paying in checks and cash, which I know you're not gonna be doing every day, but when you do, that will be quite annoying and frustrating. And that's why uh, I've marked that one down slightly. App and online account, I've given that a seven, <coughs> and the reason is the app itself, um, in terms of the design, the feature, the user, the user experience is fantastic. It is, it is a 10 out of 10, but in the pursuit of being mobile friendly and mobile only, they decided not to offer a desktop version at all, which I get it, it is cool and funky and novel, but it is quite frustrating. 
because if you're wanting to use the card uh, and then look at some of the stats on something other than a small screen of your mobile or if you're needing to export statements and I know they offer all those functionalities but it's just that much easier on a desktop if you're needing uh, a, a bit more in-depth searching looking and doing stuff and things like copying and pasting people's accounts from other emails etc it is just that much more secure and easier on a desktop so I would quite like there to be a desktop version as well uh, I'm, I'm surprised that they still haven't done one for customer service, I've scored it a five. And the reason I have scored it is I'm trying to compare it to other customer service uh, that's available from other current account providers. And we're talking fundamentally, it is not as good. So in order to chat to somebody, you have to go into the app, you have to find the chat function, which isn't as obvious as it perhaps should be. Um, and I think that's intentional. You then submit something and it can take a lot longer, it's not gonna be instant, it's not gonna be quick. In some cases, it can take a long time for somebody to get back to you. I don't think that's particularly great user experience. On the features, let's talk about the product features. The features that it offers are fantastic. So all the assigning money to parts, the budgeting, um, the budgeting tool that you provide where you can assign how much money you want to spend on each different category per month is great. I just wish that they began gradually expanding the range of options they offer. With a bank, you can do them. I know it's gonna cost you a lot of money, but you can do them. And for people who don't like the hassle, that um, having all those extra features from the more established banks is great. Um, that's why the features score is not quite as high as it could be at seven. Um, overall design quality, I've given it an eight. And the eight is because the app and all of that stuff is great. The fact that there isn't a website is a down. And the fact that some of the features that established accounts have is a down, um, that's marking it down. Features compared to other products of the same class, scores a six. And the reason it's a six is for the same reason I mentioned before, um, although it does offer a lot of the basic features, some of the more in-depth features like allowing access to your account for other people, some other features just don't exist on Monzo. And it's, it's done for simplicity, it's done for good reasons, but it has to be marked down uh, for that. So overall, when you top them all up, you get a score of 74 out of 100, which is very, very good for a current account. Um, I certainly am looking forward to getting to know Monzo a bit better and using it over time and seeing how they improve and what new features they add. It is not currently my main bank account just because it lacks some of the things, some of the features that I do use on my main bank account. And I do like the ability to be able to speak to somebody if I have an issue that can't be resolved through the app. Although having said that, the help center they've built is really great and you'll probably find most of your answers in there. So uh, you probably shouldn't have to ring or to chat to people because most of the answers provided, but I may be persuaded as I use it more. If you like this, please make sure you subscribe. Please smash the like button and hit that bell so you get notifications. My videos are coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And every time one comes out, you'll get a little notification in your window saying you should go and watch it. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if there's something else you'd like me to review, if there's anything else you want to know, leave a comment. I'll make sure I reply to every comment where there is a question and I'll see you guys later.